Uh, hi, we are Extrock. I am Dave, and today we get to talk to Andy. <laughs> Me. From, <laughs> yes, to and we get to talk to Andy from hell. From hell. Yeah. That's pretty cool to w say. I'm from hell. Well, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's good. It's good. It's good beer. Good beer in Sweden. The, the, actually, the Swedish gigs have been going. Uh, Really well, actually. I mean, we've done quite a lot over here with Sweden Rock and obviously the um, you know, Sweden Rock cruise we did. And uh, it's, we've got these little pockets of fans. Uh, There's Belgium that's really good for us. And uh, where was it? Denmark as well was really good. So, yeah, Sweden uh, seems to have uh, got our back. Seems to be pretty good here. Very cool. Because so you just played a gig. Yeah. Any other? Stockholm? Yeah. Free Yeah. Good crowd. A lot of people in, actually. It was, actually. Yeah. Because you sold like uh, 1,500 tickets, but uh, well, total for all three bands. Yeah. But you had at least eight, 900 people, right? Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I know they were, th that hall we're in tonight, um, it's got sort of three sections in it, and they're, like they're doing a lot of these sort of bigger places, you know, they curtain it off and you get a certain, like a third or two thirds or the full place, and I know they've opened more up tonight for, for this crowd. So, yeah, I mean, the whole tour's done really well. Um, Germany was amazing. I mean, Amon Amarth have got a real sort of strong fan base out there. So, uh, and I think the good thing about the package, really, when you look at it, even though we're quite different, you know, with we're quite with Dave as a singer, it's quite a lot more melody in the vocals than uh, Amon Amarth and Carcass. I think we we sort of still, you know, can fit into the the sort of the genre of fans that's here. You know, I think we're we're heavy enough to fit in. And different oh, enough to fit in, yeah. Where you know, when, when we when we organised this, well, when we got on this tour, there's a few people grumbling at the label saying, you know, you're not death metal enough for this tour. And I think that's, uh, <laughs> I think it's a very short-sighted, you know, narrow-minded opinion of, of what we uh, what we want to achieve. Because it's good for us. We're going out. We're playing to a crowd that's not really our crowd, but we're winning them over. So uh, yeah, it's good. A lot of people are actually saying. Wow, yeah. this was this was really really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, we've got the heaviness in the music, and it's got, you know, I mean, people always sort of, uh, you know, give us that sort of that merciful fate meets Rush meets Ju you know Judas Priest type vibe that they think that we've got. So, I think any of those three bands really, you know, with a metal audience is going to win. So, of course, mm. the only mutual thing about this is you. Actually, why? Well, what do you mean? Uh, mixing, mastering, producing. Yeah, well, I, Mart, I was. Uh, and carcass. Oh, I see what you mean. The, yeah, the common <laughs> thing. Yeah, how do you think we got the tour? <laughs> oh, it's funny. Of course, but, of well, no, it's, it, but, I mean that that all came about because I was talking to um, I was talking to the guys when they were in the studio, and I was writing stuff for the Hell Record then, so they were they were hearing stuff that was going on. Um, and when when I heard Carcass had got the tour, obviously I mixed the Carcass record as well. Yeah. Um, so I was well connected, you know, with the management and everything. So I, I knew they'd be looking for a third band for this bill, and I knew our album would be coming out around November, December. So you know, it's just it's just common sense, really. So I called the management up and called the agent up that I knew, and uh, you know, made it work. So. Great. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's been a few people sort of go, you know, the only reason you're doing this tour is because you know these guys. It's like, well, yeah, you know, that, it, it, that is kind of how the music business works, you know. You know? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't put us on the bill if they thought we were shit, you know. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, yeah, of course, you know, everyone knows each other in the music business. You know, that, 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 if you're well connected, that's when you become good managers and, you know, you go a long way. So, uh, yeah, of course, I'd use it to my advantage. <laughs> yeah. You actually recently, well, just kind of released Curse and uh, Chapter. Yeah, 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 that came out um, probably about three weeks ago, something like that, but it's, it's done well. It's gone, gone you know, pretty well in the charts in, uh, in different countries, and it's, I mean, it's getting rave reviews everywhere, so um, no, we're pretty happy with it, yeah. Uh, who's done what on this album? Um, well, it's, just, it's the same, obviously, same lineup as the first album. The, the difference with the first album and this album is that there's 50% of the, the music is old material from the 80s. Uh, and then there's obviously the other 50% is new material we've, we've written this time. Um, and it's, that's really been a culmination of, of Kev, myself and Dave putting the new material together. Um, it's, it works well, we've kind of got two different ways of writing. Kev will come to the table with sort of musical pieces and sheets of lyrics that he's got this mad idea for and we sort of hammer it out and put it together and it goes around the houses quite a bit to get to where it needs to go and I'll tend to come to the table with uh, a more basic finished idea that me and Dave then build upon 
uh, and you know Kev will put some keyboard parts in and stuff so there's, there's two different directions that the, the new music comes from um, but it, it works both ways and you know in, when we sort of meet in the middle and when we've sort of hammered it out you know it sounds like hell and I think that I keep saying this in all the interviews but the deciding point the thing that makes it sound like hell I think is Dave's voice because you can take his voice off the music uh, there's quite an eclectic mix of music there you know sort of across the board I mean the stuff I write is a bit more metal and a bit more straightforward Kev will write some more almost poppy type stuff and a bit more progressive stuff but once Dave's voice is on it it ties it all together um, and I think that's what gives the whole sort of landscape of music that, that we do, it makes it more more dynamic for a whole album, you know, it's not the same all the way through. No, because if, uh, if we go to Nuclear Blast's uh, webpage, you're described as power they, they, speed... Nuclear Blast through. haven't got a clue how to describe <laughs> us. Apparently we're heavy metal music giving you the creep, so I was like... Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we need, I need to talk to that label about but you that. Sound like, you sound like help. <laughs> yeah, That's well, we are. Yeah, you know, it's it's just like we 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 actually don't worry about what we sound like. We just do what we like, and it, you know whether it's good or not. You kind of, you know, you know. There's a, we've sort of got a quality control within the group, and we, you know, we're our own, you know, worst critics. Really, we'll we'll sit there and you know, if something's not right, we say it's not right. Um, we don't just bodge something together. We 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 get it to a standard where we all sit back and sort of go, yeah. How yeah, this, this album actually took two years? Uh, well, it's not yeah. like we've been working on it constantly. Uh, we, we weren't in a rush to do a second album. We didn't, you know, when we did the first album, we didn't really have a plan for it. Um, and it's kind of, we, we've just sort of pieced it together. And, we, you know, we've been out, we've done festivals. I still feel we could have done more with the first album. You know, we didn't get some of the countries that I wanted to get with that. But, uh, yeah, I think sort of two, sort of two and a half years between albums isn't, isn't a bad thing. I don't want to be one of these bands that's churning an album out every year, year and a half, and being on the road constantly. No. I mean, I, we can't do it with my job. We can't do it with a couple of the other guys' jobs anyway. It's not, you know, we're, I'm, I'm the youngest in the band at 44. <laughs> and uh, what's funny about that? Youngest. <laughs> no, yeah. so it's. It, um, you know, we've obviously all got lives apart from the band as well, so we're not trying to do this where we're making it, um, you know, we're, we're desperately trying to get albums out to get the budget in to go out and tour again. It's kind of, we're going to do it at, at our own pace, whether, you know, the label like that or whether the agents like that or not. It's, I, I, I actually get bored of bands that come around every year and a half, you know, as a producer. I was just going to ask you about that. Yeah, but it's the same for me. I mean, you, you've got to think, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, when I've worked with a band on sort of two or three albums, I'm kind of, like, you know, I don't think there's anything more I can really put into this because I put all my ideas into this band. So I actually turn around the bands a lot of the time and say, I think it's time to work with someone else because it gets boring for everyone. And I think as a fan as well, if you're, you know, a band that's putting something out, you know, every year and a half, every two years, you know, regularly, I think it gets quite stagnated and quite boring so you have to watch out for that I think it's not a problem we're gonna have because it's probably gonna be another 20 years before we put another album out <laughs> <laughs> no 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 probably, probably probably sort of a good two and a half three years though, I think between albums is fine okay. yeah why not yeah uh, I have to ask you about this single uh, age of uh, nefarious yeah is that an old or a new song that's a new song yeah that's a new song yeah Whose idea was it to flirt with Age of Aquarius? Well, Dave, <laughs> that was actually, Dave had written a set of lyrics called Age of Nefarious, which was obviously a play on words from the, um, the, the musical thing. And the, the, actually, when you listen to the, the musical and ours, it isn't the same. It's got the same vibe, but I think... It's not the same, it's but... It's not the same, but, but it's, got, it's got that yeah, twist, yeah. yeah. But Hell's always had a little bit of humour in, in the songs all the way down the line. It was just a little sort of nod to that when we did it. <laughs> it made us chuckle, you know. <laughs> it's not close enough to get sued, so we're OK. Because it sounds, it's, it's like, well, seeing you on stage and listening to it, it, it sounds like it's very serious, but with hum humour. Mm, yeah. Is that kind of like how you? It's it's a little tongue in cheek. It's not something like say like something like the darkness, for instance, which has got a lot of humour in it. It's not it's not like that or Steel Panther or anything like that. But the, the, the best way I could describe it is if you look at something like Rammstein, which is sort of theatrical, but it's got a touch of humour to it, and it's telling stories and it's it's got a vibe, and that's what we kind of try and do. We kind of put the uh, just the entertainment back in it a little bit. You know, uh, it's, metal hasn't got to be deadly serious all the time um, it hasn't got to be a joke but I think the, there is room for a little bit of breathing space there um, 
So yeah, we, you know, it, we, the topics are serious, and the, the, the we're very serious about the music and the way we play and the show we put on. Um, but it's just a little bit of the probably Englishness, I'd say. To it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Englishness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we have got a bit of an English vibe, which is nice, you know. <laughs> Okay. Probably, probably why Germany doesn't like us. <laughs> oh, Germany didn't like you? No, they love us. We, we, yeah, no, it's all right. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, I actually overheard you uh, talking about what you're doing after this tour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I go out to Nashville on it's about the, the 8th or the 10th um, of January to start work with Accept on their record. Um, we're going to be out there till probably late February, but I'm uh, taking a slight break in that to help Exodus out on their album as well. So, yeah, it's going to be sort of accepting Exodus at the start of next year. Um, there's a few other things as well, but no nothing's confirmed yet. But, yeah. you know, good couple of projects to get, get my teeth into at the start of next year. You're busy, busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so no, that's, uh, yeah, that's going to, uh, that's going to you know, with the mixing as well, I'm going to be busy probably through until April on that. So... Um, there's not really going to be any hell stuff until probably May, June, July, you know, with festivals. And then we're looking after festivals next year, we're going to look at sort of doing our own headline package thing around Europe, hopefully. So that's the, that's the plan. Cool. We'll see if it happens. Cool. Yeah. The live video, uh, you just, well, you released it. Yeah. Um, were you scared for the singer when he walks out on? <laughs> on stilts? No, Dave. Yeah, on um, <laughs> now, Dave uh, actually has done a lot of stuff on stilts because he was in a, a musical in London, a West End musical, where he did the whole thing on stilts. So we knew he could do it. Oh, okay. um, and they're actually, uh, believe it or not, they're only 80 pound plaster of stilts, you know, that, that decorate as well when they're, they're doing the walls. And yeah. we, we got them built into a costume. Okay. Um, but we, you know, we rehearse it a lot when we do these sort of things. Where you know, even with the the tridents on fire, we, we rehearse all that with the uh, you know spinning it and you know him on stilts and the change over times and all this. We have to actually write the set with the amount of you know thinking of costume changes with the amount of time in between the songs, so it looks you know quick when we do it. So we know he's got time to get backstage, <laughs> get these things off, you know, flight case in the right place, you know, all this. <laughs> It's actually, if you saw what was going on behind stage and the panic that was going on behind stage when we're doing all this, it's a, it's a different world to what the, uh, the calm, collected thing out, out front. But uh, no, it's, I mean, we, we've, like I say, we've rehearsed it a lot. So uh, and he's actually getting better and better on And when, when, when we did it at Derby, um, which I think was the first time we'd, we'd used the stilts, uh, it was a bit, you know, because the room and the, the size of the stage was a bit awkward, but the... Uh, the bloodstock footage was uh, came across a lot better because the stage was a lot bigger. So, mm. yeah. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> also, does he actually whip himself on stage? Yeah, yeah. He's definitely got bruises and yeah marks after a show. <laughs> yeah, he does go for it. Yeah, he's, he's pretty black and blue when he comes off a <laughs> off a gig, Davis. Especially with the jumping on and off the stage as well. That can get him a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey said, uh, well, I talked to Carcass, and mm. he said something that they won't win over the Christian part of metal. Will mm. you? I, d I doubt it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't really care, really. I mean, I'm, that's not the kind of crowd I'm, uh, I'm appealing to. <laughs> <laughs> this is Andy Sneak from Hell, and you're watching Access Rock.